lot of beginners struggle with analyzing the data for product research. However, many equally struggle with coming up with product ideas. Without a steady stream of good product ideas, it's difficult to find viable products to launch. So in this video, I'm going to show you some different methods that I use to find product ideas for product research. But first, my name is Crescent, and if this is our first time meeting, welcome to my channel. My passion is sharing tips and strategies on how you can create a successful Amazon FBA private label business. So if you enjoy videos like this, or especially if you've been around my channel, consider subscribing. All right, let's get started. So one of the best methods to get product ideas for a beginner is to use a product database such as the one from Jungle Scout. Now, if you don't know what the product database is, it's a collection of all of the products in the Amazon marketplace. And Jungle Scout has collected all the data for these products so that you can apply filters to them so that you can find specific products that match these filters. So for example, if we jump into the Jungle Scout product database, you can see here on the left, they can choose the specific categories of the products that you wish to sell in. And over here on the right, here's where we can set the filters to find products that match the specific criteria that you're looking for. So for example, most beginners all use the same filters. And it's common for beginners to use a price point between $15 and $50. And that's because anything below $15, there's probably not much profit there to be made. And anything above $50 no longer becomes an impulse buy and buyers tend to do a little more research on it. So that's why it's recommended to stay between $15 and $50. And the sales velocity most beginners are gonna use is typically around 250 to 300 units per month, as you can see here. And as for reviews, this is how we determine how competitive a niche is. And it's mostly recommended that you wanna find products that have less than 75 reviews, as you can see here. And you wanna find products that are small and light and typically below two pounds and fit within a shoebox. So that's why you see this set here. And for you to find product ideas that most people aren't gonna see, you're gonna have to stray away from these common filters. And I'll show you a few that I like to use. Now one method to find great product ideas is to look in a price range where most beginners aren't looking. And this is because most beginners have a limited budget, so they're looking within the 15 to 25 $30 price range. So if you have slightly more capital, you can look in the higher price range, such as $25 to $50 or $50 and higher. And you can easily do that by just setting the filter here. Now, another good method is instead of actually looking at the sales velocity and setting a minimum, you can look at a minimum revenue. And because a good way to judge how much profit is actually being made is typically around one third of what the total revenue per month is. So for example, if a listing is making around $9,000 per month, you can estimate that they're generally making around $3,000 profit because one third of it is gonna to go to manufacturing and shipping. The other third is gonna to go to FBA fees and the last third is their net profit. So a good revenue range to start looking in is around 8,000 to around $15,000. And this will show you a whole different list of products. And again, if you're slightly more aggressive, you can look in a higher revenue range, such as 12,000 to 20,000 price range. Just mix and match it and see what you find. Now, another good way to look is to actually set a maximum review rating. So what you can do is use this filter and specifically find products that have poor product ratings. So what I like to do here is set it to around 3.7. And what this will do is it'll pull up products that have problems and people are complaining about it so I can fix these problems to differentiate them. Now a common frustration beginners have is when you use these filters, you come up with a list of thousands of products. So for example, if I use the common filters here and do a search, you can see that it pulls up 24,000 listings and this can be overwhelming for you to go through. So what you can do is you can narrow these filters down and tighten them up. So I have a smaller set of products to sort through. So a good way here is perhaps lower the number of reviews to 50 or make it more restrictive by combining filters such as adding the re uh, lower review count here. And you can further differentiate by specifically targeting listings that have poor listings. So this filter here, the LQS, is the listing quality score. And so what Jungle Scout has done is they've rated all of the listings on a score based out of 10, 10 being the best. So what we can do here is set a max listing score of say seven and combine these filters and see what products come up here. So now you can see the results has been dramatically reduced to just uh, 3,500 listings for you to sort through. And a pro tip here, and this is a method that I use all the time, not just on the product database, 
is to instead of going through these results in order, is to actually go through it in reverse order or random order because most people are gonna go through this page by page one at a time. So what I like to do is actually go backwards because most people aren't gonna do this. So it's more likely that I'm gonna find products that other people aren't seeing. So instead of going one, two, three, I start in the back and start with page 18 and go backwards or I'll randomly choose pages and search through them that way. Now, if you're interested in trying out the web app, they do have a free trial version and I'll leave a link in the video description below to a coupon for you. So if you do decide to purchase it, you can save some money. Now, one technique that I like to use coupled with using a product database or any other search method is what I call the inception method, meaning that I don't just limit myself to what I see in the results here. When I see a product that has potential and I analyze that niche, I'll continue to look for products from that initial niche idea. So for example, let's just uh, pick a random product here. Let's say we were looking at this uh, wooden ladle. I would go to Amazon and type in the broadest keyword for it, which is wooden ladle. And of course, this product idea is probably too competitive. If we pull up the Chrome extension and take a look. Okay, it's not too competitive, but the sales is too low, as you can see here, and the price point is also too low. But just because this product idea doesn't pass the product research criteria, it doesn't end there. I call this inception method because I'll go deeper following this niche idea. So I'll come down here and click on one of these listings, maybe the Amazon's Choice one. And I'll come down here and I'll look in the frequently bought together and see if there's anything there that catches my eye. So this is a bamboo tong and a pasta serving spoon. And then I'll look here and see if there's any products that catch my eye, as well as the sponsored listings here. And this is a great way to give you other product ideas that weren't in the original product database search results. And again, you can scroll down and there's another list of products here you can search through. And what's great too, is you can also pull up the Jungle Scout Chrome extension on this page and see if anything here catches your eye as well. Okay, and this can lead you down different paths. So for example, if we scroll through these and I find something else that catches my eye, like these salad bowls, now I'm one level deeper than the original search results. And again, if this niche idea doesn't pass the product research criteria, I'll come down here and look for other products that might catch my eye. So for example, let's just say these uh, snack bowls catches my eye. And if it doesn't pass the product research criteria, I'll continue to look. And this will lead me further away from the original result in the product database. And each level deeper that I can go, five or six levels deeper, will lead me to better product ideas and the less potential that other people are seeing these products. Another place to look is to look in the seller store. So for example, this seller is Bobo and Boo. So if I click on theirs, and if they have a really good product that's selling well, they most likely have other products that are selling well. So if I look in their store here, I can see what other products they're selling. So you can see they have plates and bowls and other sets. And I can look through here and see if anything else catches my eye. So the key here is, is to don't limit yourself to one method or one technique. Branch out, there's no right or wrong way to come up with different product ideas. Now, there's other excellent methods to find product ideas outside of Amazon. And what's great about these other methods is that it allows you to find products that already have existing demand. And one of those websites is actually Pinterest.com. So if we go to Pinterest, what you can do is do a search for example, uh, gifts for dad, and see if any products show up here. But the key here is, I recommend staying away from fads, trendy items, or novelty items. So you wanna find things that catch your eye that are kind of strange and out of the ordinary. So you can scroll through here and change up your search criteria such as uh, gifts for mom, that's a great one, or um, Christmas gifts is a great one, and search through here and see if there's anything to catch your eye. I remember a while ago I was searching and um, I saw this and that gave me a great idea for uh, gift bags. 
So again, if you see something like that, you can go back to Amazon and do a search for gift bags. And pull up the Chrome extension. And we can see that the price point is on the low side. Sales is actually pretty good. And reviews is on the competitive side. Okay, but back then when I was looking at it, it wasn't as competitive. So again, Pinterest is a great way to find product ideas that already have demand. And there's several other websites that I use that are really similar to Pinterest and I use them the same way. So another one is Shut Up and Take My Money. And what you can do here is you can do a search just like on Pinterest or you can niche down. A good one is to do the best of or you can choose specific categories here like uh, gifts for him or home and kitchen and again search through here to see if there's anything that catch your eye another website is thieve.co and it's the same as previously you can do a search or just niche down for example homeware and what I like to do is click on trending here and see what uh, trending products catch my eye here. Okay, I think you get the idea. Now, another technique they like to use is actually search on Alibaba. Now, I know this is where everybody's finding manufacturers, but this is also a great resource to find product ideas. And what you wanna do here is actually niche down. So for example, uh, look in home and kitchen, um, and then do home storage and organization. And again, you can pick and choose for your liking. And what I recommend also, instead of doing best match, switch it to transaction level. And what this does is it sorts the listings by how frequently this product has been ordered and, ma and manufactured in the last six months. So you can see here, this is a uh, cotton bag for tea, uh, store, uh, food storage containers, um, a wicker basket of some kind, um, and this, uh, uh, shoe slot, which is something I actually looked at doing about a year ago as well, where the numbers are actually really good. Um, let's actually take a look at it here. It's 30 cents to 50 cents a unit. So if we jump over to Amazon and do a shoe slot organizer, you can see that these are the products here. And if we look at the Jungle Scout data, You can see the price point is really good, right? Um, sales is decent and the reviews isn't too bad. It was actually a little less before. The sales wasn't as good when I was looking at it, but sales has actually gotten a lot better. Um, medium demand, medium competition. So, you know, this might be a worthwhile one to pursue, maybe a little more data analysis on it and some product tracking. It might actually end up being a decent product to sell. You can see these guys are doing $27,000 in revenue. This uh, top listing here, $18,000, $17,000, $18,000 in revenue, right? So again, if you use the one-third rule, these guys are doing three to $4,000 a month in profit. So as you can see, using Alibaba is a great way to find product ideas. Now, another great website they like to use is called watchcount.com. And what WatchCount does is it tracks on eBay what products people have added to their watch list. So it's a great way to see what the popular products are that people actually want to buy. So what I like to do here is go to WatchCount.com and use this uh, watched 2.0 version because it gives you some uh, more granular filters. Okay, so what I'll do is choose a niche. I always like to niche down. Um, let's choose Home and Garden. Um, if you can't tell, I like the home and garden um, category here. And then what I'll do here is I'll set a price, right? So $15 to uh, $50, let's just say. And now here, again, I'll look for products that catch my eye. Strange and out of ordinary products. And again, stay away from uh, fads and uh, novelty items. Okay, so I think you get the idea. Now, another great way to find products that are in demand is to look at the best sellers list on Amazon. So how you get to that is you just type in best sellers on uh, Amazon. And you can see here, Amazon best sellers, click it. And I like to niche down again. So let's choose uh, home and kitchen. 
my favorite category and then niche down again, for example, to um, storage and organization. And here, look for products that catch your eye that are strange and out of the ordinary. And here's my favorite, my can opener that I like to use in all my examples. And um, again, you can use the Chrome extension to analyze any products that catch your eye here, but they're most likely gonna be really high reviews because these are all best sellers, right? So what I like to do is just kind of look through here and see if there's anything that catches my eye. Like what's this uh, uh, seamless hooks? Um, nothing there, but anyway, you get the idea. So another great way is to look for Amazon's most wished for products. And again, just do a search Amazon's most wished for and click on the link. And this is going to show you products that people have added to their wish lists. So again, I like to niche down. So let's do home and kitchen again. And let's niche down a bit more to storage and organization. And again, now here's another list of products that again have high demand. So look through this list and see if there's anything that catches your eye for new product ideas. Now, lastly, and this is my favorite method that I use that I've found products with is what I call the letter method. So what I do here is make sure I choose all departments and I call it the letter method because I'll choose random letters and use the autocomplete in the search results to lead me down different product ideas. So you can start with letter A and go sequentially to B, C, D, or you can go backwards or you can choose random letters. So for example, I like to go randomly, uh, whatever I'm feeling for that day. So let's choose um, an H and I'll look to see if there's anything that catches my eye. And you can do one letter at a time. For example, uh, L, see if anything catches your eye here, or T, nothing there, P. Or you can continue and add letters and see what else pops up. So let's try H, I, R. And again, you just choose random letters and see what comes up. There's no right or wrong way. H, E, M. R, H, E, I, height chart for kids. See, that sounds kind of interesting, right? So let's see what that is, height chart for kids. So height chart would be the broadest keyword. Um, and then let's pull up the Jungle Scout data. Okay, so the price point is on the low side, but I think if you add some value, you can get the price above $15. The sales is okay. It could be better, it's kind of inconsistent here, but the reviews are low, right? And you can see here actually says, the opportunity score says it's medium demand, low competition, right? So perhaps with a little more research on this, you know, proving the product somehow or bundling it with something, it might be a viable product. The sales is, is inconsistent here and the revenue is kind of low. And again, this is the letter method that I like to use the most because it just leads you down random paths and uh, reveals product ideas that you wouldn't find normally through filters like in a product database or uh, looking through lists or on another website. I'm curious, let me know in the comments if you're one of those that struggle to find product ideas and what methods you've been using and if you've come up with any strange or interesting methods to do product research. And if you have any questions, post them up in the comment section below. All right, thanks for watching. If you found value in this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And to make sure you never miss a video, click that bell icon to turn on notifications. There's also a link in the video description below to our community forums, which you should totally join. And if you're looking for more tips and strategy videos, click or tap over here. And as always, thanks for watching.